Unit 9, Inheritance, Topic 9.2, Writing Constructors for Subclasses. As we learned in Unit 5, UML diagrams can be used to visually represent programs. This is a basic UML diagram of a class. You should be comfortable drawing these to help you construct code for FRQ Style 2 questions. It is best practice to write the constructor of a class as the first method. Remember, the purpose of constructors is to set the initial state of an object by initializing their instance variables. You can identify constructors easily as they have the same name as its class. Let's take a look at this person class. It has two instance variables, name and age, as well as two constructors. A default, no argument constructor, and a constructor with parameters. Notice how the constructors are used to initialize the instance variables name and age. We've created a subclass student that extends the superclass person. Because student class extends person class, it has access to its instance variables name and age, which is why we don't need to rewrite those. Rather, we need to write only the ones that are specific or unique to student class. In this case, grade and GPA. Now let's focus on the subclass constructor. Constructors are not inherited. Subclasses don't inherit the constructor from the superclass, so they need their own, either explicitly created or a default constructor created by Java. Just as we honor and show respect to our superiors, subclasses must do the same to their superclass. They do so by calling the superclass constructor and initializing the superclass instance variables first. Look at the parameters in the student subclass constructor. Notice that the first parameters will be used to initialize the superclass instance variables. The superclass constructor can be called from the first line of a subclass constructor by using the keyword super and passing appropriate parameters. The very first line within the subclass constructor calls the superclass constructor using the keyword super. Creating a subclass also creates a superclass, so we need to make sure we are correctly calling the superclass constructor. In Java, we have a special way that we can call the superclass constructor. We use the keyword super on the first line of our subclass constructor. Then we pass the parameters needed to satisfy the superclass constructor. In this example, the student constructor takes name, age, grade, and GPA. The grade and GPA values are set in the student object, but name and age get passed to the person class. The actual parameters passed in the call to the superclass constructor provide values that the constructor can use to initialize the object's instance variables. When a subclass's constructor does not explicitly call a superclass's constructor using the keyword super, Java inserts a call to the superclass's no argument constructor, also known as the default constructor. Notice that in this example, the student subclass doesn't make a call to the superclass constructor. Without this call, Java automatically uses the no argument constructor in the person class, if there is one. Regardless of whether the superclass constructor is called implicitly or explicitly, the process of calling superclass constructors continues until the object constructor is called. At this point, all of the constructors within the hierarchy execute beginning with the object constructor. The object class is the god of all classes, the parent of all parents, the superclass of all superclasses. It's at the very top of the Java hierarchy. We previously mentioned how Java automatically defers to the object class to string method. However, you might remember that it doesn't really output meaningful information to humans. Let's put it all together. In CodeHS Sandbox, I created a person.java file and constructed a basic person class. I created another student.java file, and in it, I constructed a subclass student that extends the superclass person. In the main class, I constructed an object S1 of type student. I call the student constructor with actual parameters. You can see how the subclass student can access the instance variables and methods from its superclass. In summary, since constructors are not inherited, a subclass needs to create its own constructor. The superclass constructor should be called as the first line of the subclass constructor. If no explicit call is made to the superclass constructor, Java automatically calls the superclass default constructor if there is one. When no superclass is defined, the object class is called. The 9.2 daily videos 1 and 2 explore writing subclass constructors in more detail.